I always wanted to go to South Sudan since I was a child. My parents always told me that I wasn't from here. I was from another country, and um, I always wanted to learn more about it. I just wanted to return back to my roots. And as I grew up, I learned more about my situation, where I'm at, and also learned about what's going on back at home, and my people, my country. And I, there's just always been that yearning for me to return and find a way that hopefully I can go back and help. Comrade Wenyin, Gabriel, you are welcome home. This is your home, this is your nation, this is the nation we have been fighting for, and today we are a sovereign nation, and your coming also will give a new narrative that South Sudanese can do great things. My mom and my father have always been big on teaching me where I'm from. Both of my parents, they, they fled South Sudan during the war. Pictures you were never meant to see. The hidden face of Africa's longest civil war. In six months, slowly but steadily, war in South Sudan has created more refugees than Syria or Iraq has in a year. Civil wars in Sudan tore the country apart, displacing millions of people and creating a dire humanitarian situation. In 2011, South Sudan became independent from Sudan, forming the world's newest country. During this upheaval, Wenyan Gabriel's family was one of millions displaced. Our people originally is from South Sudan, but my parents died over there in the war. My family actually sent me away when I was a little kid to come to Khartoum, Sudan. My parents had already fled their home villages and at the time it was just Sudan, so Khartoum was the capital and that's where I was born. It's a safe place to live, but they don't give us opportunity for a job and there's no good school, we can't afford anything. It's not what I was want my kid to be growing up from places like that. With help from the UN, Wenyan's family relocated to the United States when he was just two years old. We left over there when he was a baby, but I always told my children the story, where we come from, what was the problem, and how we ending up here. We have to be grateful for whatever we got it from here, because some people do not get this opportunity we have here. I told them I wish one day I would bring you back home one by one. What are your plans for the South Sudanese uh, basketball lovers, especially the kids, the young upcoming kids? Uh, you're going to take part in the national team, which is uh, Bright Talents, but what is your plan as you're going to be in home? Thank you. Uh, first, I'm having, obviously I'm here from my basketball camp, to first to learn about my community, a lot of different reasons, but to also understand how I can help in the future, you know, if there's future basketball courts that need to be built, I know eventually we need an arena here in this country and there's a lot of different things. I have a dream one day to have an academy. There's a lot of things that need to get done, but I'm starting one step at a time. And first, you know, go play for the national team, come run this camp and, and see how many more support and more ideas that we need to get and know which direction direction we're going in. So as long as we get people going in the right direction, I think that's my main mission here first. And then to learn more and gather more information while I'm here. Thank you. What's your name? Thank you guys for coming. What's your name? Nice to meet you. 
So I had a camp in my hometown in um, huh? Manchester, New Hampshire, because I, I, always, I always has a place in my heart because that's where I was grown. That was the place where they gave us refuge, and that's the place where it took us in. So I, I was I'm always grateful for that. But to go back to South Sudan is something that I felt was more impactful for the entire country. Okay, who's the best player here? Sure. You? What's in there? Sure. All right, cuz. <laughs> What's in there? They can see someone that looks just like them, that is here in the States, that is playing at the highest stage in the NBA. I can inspire them right there in person. So I think it had a greater significance to have my camp in my home country. This is not going to be a one-time thing. We want to make sure we get opportunities. We're trying to bring people to America here, here to America, build up our country. We're going to compete against each other. We're going to keep growing. You see the national teams undefeated right now. The potential of our country is unmatched. You guys are the future. We have to build this country. They said this country was not free. Our people fought for it, and we paid the price in blood. Now it's our turn to pick up this beautiful country. So today, let's make sure- There's just so many different opportunities that this game of basketball to bring, and like being that that's my passion and that I've dedicated near my whole life to it, and to be able to share that is an opportunity that everybody doesn't get, so I'm really grateful for that. I have a lot of bonds through basketball that has lasted a lifetime, and that's something that I've tried to share amongst those kids through basketball. Uh huh. Yeah, come on, push yourself, cover ground. We don't look at you know tribalism. We don't look at different things. We just become friends through the game, and um, it's something that brings people together. And I feel like sports, soccer, basketball, or they're doing music, whatever it may be, uh, having this continuity is something that we need as a country going forward. Success starts with us, no? And I say that um, as I am also former refugees, and I was lucky to go to the United States as you did, right? For you, you come to share with those one who are not lucky. Everybody cannot go to U.S., right? But those who went can come and make a difference in their country. So that's what I say, success starts with us. Yeah. I've been working with the U.N. throughout the years, the UNHCR. I just always made it a plan for me to come and, and visit these IDP camps. And to be honest, I didn't know what to expect going there as well. Wenyan, together with the UNHCR, the United Nations Refugee Agency, will be heading outside the capital to see firsthand the impact that conflict and climate change has had on this homeland. The impact of climate change is now clear for people in the northern part of South Sudan. Residents of this area were displaced by flooding and water has still not receded from the area. Unprecedented flooding with crops and fields and homes covered by an inland sea. The flooding is the latest blow to a country which has experienced widespread violence and conflict since it became independent in 2011. This camp for internally displaced persons, or IDPs, is just one of several camps run by the UNHCR to shelter and protect families forced to flee because of conflict and climate change. However, a lack of funding has created harsh living conditions. Oh my God! These are the women group. Uh huh. Then the ID to come. Oh my God! These are the children. Thank you guys, yo. Oh my God. Yeah, that reception was a, uh, it was a surprise. I didn't know what to expect. It was emotional for me to see the way that they're living, but it was also inspiring to see how they knew who I was. Like that was something that was, I didn't, I didn't know people who knew who I was across the water like that. Mother, in the rest of the family, 
Raul va a cambiar tu manga a Yucatán. Even though I'm South Sudanese, I grew up in America and a lot of the news that I get from the country is the same news that we get in the Western media. And for me to come here, it was really eye-opening for me to see how people are really living. It, it really touched me. We remember you as a child of South Sudan and we are going to tell you some challenges. We are here suffering because everything we left home when a flood. Uh, Our children who were brought here, that is no schools. Coming to America, I mean, at first being a refugee, it seemed like I was being condemned, like it was a sentence, but growing into who I am now, I see that it became a blessing. And it became a blessing before I made it to the NBA, um, realizing that just having running water, having electricity, having food to eat, Um, even my mom, even just having a job is a blessing. Where we came to the camp where people don't even have an opportunity where they can work. Over in America, there are many of us like myself who want to come back, who will come back. I don't know when we will come back, but we all have to build our country. We all. This We will start building. When we come home, I will go take all these messages. I will try to share the messages with my brothers there, and we'll try to come back here and to bring more help and support. Thank you. Thank you. There was a big level of shock seeing this in person. Whether you hear about it, you see pictures, it's not the same as when you go there in person and you get to see it and because you can really feel it when you're there in person. Thank you. You guys gonna show me around? Yeah, let's go. Let's Let me go. see. And to see that this being the one of the biggest crises in Africa and for it to be the one of the most underfunded is just heartbreaking. I think one of my job is now is to bring attention to us in America for us to see what is going on here so we really understand where our hand is needed. We need to bring our hand back here because these kids are the ones who are going to build this country up. Bringing attention is so important. We need more funds, we need support from different countries. We should not be pulling our support from South Sudan. I want us to really remember and not forget about South Sudan, my beautiful country. So here we are in IDP Camp 3. We got to talk to the young boys. We got to talk to the, to the women. They spoke about the sports. Women spoke about how the food is, women's education. They got to really speak from the heart. And I just think it's a great opportunity that when I come here, they get to speak to the world. And this is my chance to let their voices be heard. Every day we water a little bit and we keep shining our light onto this. And for sure, one day tomorrow, we might not enjoy the shade, but our children will enjoy the shade. So that's why we come here together. Gabriel needs to change South Sudan. It is your right, man. We are born to develop the country. We are made to change what is negative to our people. These people don't have the things that they need to survive. You can't survive, how can you thrive? There's no school, the people got no papers, no running water, no electricity, they're disconnected from the world. I came over here and they welcomed me like I was their brother. And they're looking for me to speak for them. Yeah. Sounds good, yeah. I'll be back, I'll be back. No reason people should be in this one crowded place when we have vast land. This country is so large. This is sad, man. It's sad. I'm so happy I came here with these people. Say something. Hey. Look at this little boy, man. Come over here. Look at these little kids. Who knows what without opportunity, what could they become? The youth of this country, we need to invest in them for them to build the country. And I think for us, we have to start with the basic needs first. They need to be able to have food, education, and also sports for these kids so they can grow up the right way and not grow up traumatized because these are the same people that are going to be building the country. In the capital city of South Sudan, Wenyan Gabriel is able to reunite with his grandmother for the first time in over a decade.